Great War Symphony is a musical monument in memory of all those who gave their lives during the First World War. The symphony is in four movements, which of course is the classic symphonic form. Um, I use a great deal of text within the symphony, but it was important to me that there was a musical structure to it, of course. Um, so there are four different movements, each movement depicting a different year of the war. So the first movement is 1914 to 15, and then 15 to 16, and so on. But it was important as well that I gave each movement a, a title, a musical title, which conveyed the musical structure. So the first movement is called Preludium, the second movement is called March, the third Elegy, and the fourth Finale. And of course those titles have to fit with the development of the war, so a prelude. And then of course the second year of the war saw the most kind of activity, backwards and forwards, which is why there's a sense of marching. The third year was a stalemate, and everything was very passive, really, uh, without much active movement. Though there was, of course, terrific loss of life. And I thought this was a good movement to reflect on the sadness uh, of the war. The fourth movement really ends two-thirds of the way through itself. That's the, that's the end of the war, when we are told words by Thomas Hardy, um, calm fell and there was peace on earth. So the last third of the final movement is like a coda and that is an act of remembrance and that leads into the final poem by the female American poet Moina Michael, Let Us Keep the Faith and that is the first time there is a reference to the poppy as a symbol of remembrance for the First World War. I'm very pleased with the texts I've chosen because they do dictate a musical structure that is coherent. Um, I was also conscious I just didn't want to use poetry, of which there is a vast amount, as we all know. Uh, and I didn't only want to use well-known poetry because there are poems, uh, for instance, by Sidney Oswald, the dead soldier in the third movement, which is hardly known at all. But I also wanted to use um, memorial text. I, I, I take uh, the end of the second movement uses the entry from Siegfried Sassoon's diary written on the first day of the Battle of the Somme, and so on. But uh, yeah, in the end, I'm very pleased with the with the texts that are used. My favourite bits of the Great War Symphony are hard to pinpoint, but there's the, uh, not the final verse, there's one of the verses in the poem Into Battle by Julian Grenfell, who died in battle two days after he wrote it. I think that's part of the reason it means so much to me, which talks about the horses setting an example to the soldiers with their patient eyes and courageous hearts. And I think the way I've married those words with the music, I, I'm so pleased with that. I also love The Dead Soldier, uh, the unknown poem by Sidney Oswald, which talks of the love of um, a captain for one of his men who's died. And I think it's very important that at some point in the symphony, I talk about the emotions which, which existed between the men. That's what it's all about, really. That's what drove them on. That's what bound them together.